Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chanzo. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 30th of April. Indian states run out of COVID-19 vaccines. Infections set new global record. U.S. Secretary of State Blinken expresses concern over media restrictions in Pakistan. And German military wraps up training mission in Afghanistan ahead of withdrawal. And now for all the details. Several Indian states on Friday reported they have run out of COVID-19 vaccines a day before a planned widening of a nationwide inoculation drive. As new infections in the crisis-hit country surged to another daily record. Meanwhile, shipments of medical aid comprising of oxygen cylinders, concentrators and pulse oximeters from several countries including the US continued to pour in on Friday. Several Indian states have run out of COVID-19 vaccines a day before a planned widening of a nationwide inoculation drive. Authorities said on Friday, as new infections in the crisis-hit country surged to another daily record, with 386,452 new cases, taking the infections tally to 18.76 million. Authorities said inoculation centers in Mumbai will be shut for three days, starting Friday, because of the shortage of vaccines, while Delhi's chief minister said that they have not yet received adequate number of doses and requested people in the Indian capital not to queue at the vaccination centres on May 1, when India begins vaccination for all over the age of 18 years. Jis jis ki appointment hogi, wo wo log aayega. Jald baaji mat kijiyega. Sab ko lagayenge vaccine. Uski puri tayari ki hui hai, sab ko vaccine lagayenge. Lekin aapka sahiyog chahiye. Ye na ho ki kal se aap lineo me lagye, kal se abhi vaccine abhi uplabd nahi hai. The world's second most populous nation is in deep crisis with hospitals and morgues overwhelmed by the pandemic, medicines and oxygen in short supply and strict curbs on movement in its biggest cities. Meanwhile, shipments of medical aid from across the globe continue to pour in. The first US flight carrying oxygen cylinders, regulators, rapid diagnostic kits, N95 masks and pulse oximeters arrived in the Indian capital on Friday. The US has also redirected its own order of AstraZeneca supplies to India to allow it to make more than 20 million doses. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan has purchased 13 million doses of COVID-19 vaccine from three Chinese companies and expects to receive them in the next two months, Health Minister Fazal Sultan has informed. Only slightly more than 2 million people have been vaccinated so far in Pakistan of 220 million people, the lowest rate in South Asia. Pakistan has purchased 13 million doses of COVID-19 vaccine from three Chinese companies and expects to receive them in the next two months, its health minister Fazal Sultan informed earlier this week. Sultan informed around 2.4 million doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine, part of the first tranche of 14 million doses under the COVAX program run by the World Health Organization and Gavi, would also be arriving and it would likely come from South Korea. The COVAX program has committed 45 million doses to Pakistan up to the end of 2021 and deliveries were meant to start in March. However, India making the AstraZeneca vaccine halted supplies due to its own worsening COVID-19 situation. एक तासुर दिया जा रहा है कि हुकूमत सिर्फ डोनेशंस या तोफे में आई हुई वैक्सीन्स के ऊपर इनहसार कर रही है। ये बिल्कुल गलत है। कुछ चीजें आपके सामने रखता हूँ। हम तीन मुख्तलिफ वैक्सीन मैन्युफैक्चरर्स से ऑलरेडी इन वैक्सीन्स की खरीद कर रहे हैं। only slightly more than 2 million people have been vaccinated so far in Pakistan of 220 million people, the lowest rate in South Asia. Pakistan is scrambling to secure any supplies started a vaccination drive in February with 1.2 million doses donated by China and was able to procure over 4 million doses from China in April. It now plans to start giving shots to people aged 40 and over from the first week of May. 
Moving on, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken has said that media and content restrictions are a threat to the ability to exercise the right to freedom of expression in Pakistan. He raised concern about journalists being subjected to threats and harassment at the hands of security forces, political parties, militants and other groups in Pakistan. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken has said that media and content restrictions are a threat to the ability to exercise the right to freedom of expression and association in Pakistan. Addressing a virtual roundtable, the senior U.S. official expressed concern over significant restrictions on media outlets and civil society now in Pakistan, while speaking on lack of accountability for attacks and disappearances uh, by, by against friends, journalists in the country. We've documented some of this in our uh, country reports on um, on human rights uh, practices uh, and uh, we see uh, media outlets uh, journalists their families uh, in pakistan often subject to threats uh, harassment at the hands of security forces uh, political parties uh, militants uh, other groups According to an assessment report published by Media Matters for Democracy earlier this month, journalists in Pakistan remained vulnerable to physical, legal and digital threats throughout the year 2020. Pakistan scored 30 out of 100 points on the assessment index. As per the report, at least eight individuals connected with media were killed, at least 36 journalists were attacked in the line of duty, 10 were arrested and as many as 23 instances of arbitrary detentions in connection with news reporting and online expression were recorded across Pakistan during 2020. In news from Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka reported 106,484 confirmed cases of COVID-19 with 667 deaths as of Friday. The island nation has been recording over 1,500 daily infections for the past three days. However, authorities said there is no intention to lock down the whole country yet. Sri Lanka on Friday reported 106,484 confirmed cases of COVID-19 with 667 deaths reported so far. The island nation has been recording over 1,500 daily infections for the past three days. A total of 1,531 new COVID-19 cases were reported in the last 24 hours. Over 95,440 patients have fully recovered and been discharged from hospitals across the country. Head of the National Operations Centre for Prevention of COVID-19 Outbreak, General Shavendra Silva, had earlier on Thursday said there is no intention to lock down the whole country yet. The army commander said that steps have been, however, taken to increase the capacity of hospitals amid the surging cases. Meanwhile, Sri Lanka has begun administering the second dose of the India-made COVID Shield vaccine, reports suggest. The country had started its COVID-19 vaccination program in late January. Nearly a million people have been given the first dose so far. In news from Afghanistan, as the NATO and the United States have begun their troop withdrawals from Afghanistan, German Foreign Minister Heiko Maas, who paid a surprise visit to Kabul this week, said Berlin will remain a partner to Afghanistan even after the Bundeswehr has left the country. Germany had deployed more than 100,000 soldiers to Afghanistan over the past two decades, many of them serving more than one tour in the country. The German military in Afghanistan will finish training local forces on Friday and turn its attention to withdrawing from the country. As the United States and NATO wrap up their mission after almost two decades, the defense ministry in Berlin said. U.S. President Joe Biden and the Western Military Alliance announced in mid-April that they will pull out the roughly 10,000 foreign troops still in Afghanistan by September 11. Germany has the second largest military contingent with about 1,100 troops. German Foreign Minister Heiko Maas, who paid a surprise visit to Afghanistan this week, met Afghan leaders including President Ashraf Ghani and the Chairman of High Council for National Reconciliation, Abdullah Abdullah. Any future financial aid for Afghanistan will be conditional on democratic standards being upheld there, Maas said during the visit while reaffirming Germany's commitment 
to the welfare of Afghanistan, referring to the hardline Islamist Taliban's wish to be part of a future government in Kabul. Ma said the group knew that Afghanistan was massively dependent on international aid financially and that international aid would not flow into the country if the Taliban were to scrap rights and democratic standards that have been established. The Taliban severely curtailed women's and other human rights during their reign in Afghanistan from 1996 to 2001 when they were ousted by US-led forces. Since then they have waged a long-running insurgency and now control wide swathes of territory. More news from Afghanistan. Dozens of artifacts once smuggled out of Afghanistan are now back home at the Afghan National Museum. The 33 antique items were stolen from the country during the decades-long conflict in the region. Thirty-three artifacts smuggled from Afghanistan to the United States during two decades of war were delivered to the Afghan National Museum on Thursday. These artifacts belonging to the 2nd and 11th centuries AD were obtained from an art dealer by anti-trafficking police in the US in 2012 and 2014, said Mohammad Fahim Rahimi, director of the National Museum of Afghanistan. و یکی از نمونه های اخیر را که شما امروز میبینید نمی بسی بسی قلم آثار هستند که از آمریکا برگردانده شده و ما خوشحال هستیم که در قسمت فعالیت های فرامرزی خود ردیابی از آثار به کمک وزارت امور خارجه و سفارت های ما در کشورهای مختلف 40 years of war from the 1980s Soviet occupation to internal fighting and the war against the Taliban have destroyed much of Afghanistan's art, artifacts and architecture از تمام مردم شریف افغانستان میخوایم که جلو قاچاقچیان را در یک بسیج ملی بگیرند جلو حفاره ها و حفریات غیر قانونی را مردم کمک کند که توسط نهادهای امنیتی گرفته شود The Taliban in 2001 destroyed artifacts dating from the 3rd century when many Afghans practiced Buddhism including two towering Buddha statues in Bamiyan province and scores of smaller ones excavated from monasteries and preserved at the National Museum in Kabul. As the ongoing pandemic continues to claim lives of hundreds of COVID-19 patients all around India, a non-governmental organization in Indian capital New Delhi is arranging for the cremation of those who succumbed to the disease. Crematoriums in India are trying to cope with the overwhelming influx of bodies with some cremated in makeshift fires in parks and parking lots as the country's total virus cases have crossed 18 million mark. Members and volunteers of Indian capital New Delhi-based non-governmental organization are stepping in to cremate COVID-19 victims whose families are unable to take care of the bodies. Crematoriums in India are trying to cope up with an overwhelming influx of bodies, with some cremated in makeshift piles in parks and parking lots as the country's total virus cases have crossed the 18 million mark. Volunteers from Shaheed Bhagat Singh Seva Dal NGO say they are bringing dozens of bodies daily to the capital Seemapuri crematorium to cremate them. आज हम एक दिन में 40 से लेके 45 और 50 तक की बॉडी डेड बॉडी जो घरों के अंदर क्वारंटाइन है वो डेथ हो रही है उनको उठा के लाने का काम सब हम कर रहे हैं जैसी कॉल आती है हम किसी को एक घंटे में किसी को दो घंटे में रेस्क्यू कर लेते हैं उसमें हमारे वारियर जाते हैं डेड बॉडी को सैनिटाइज करते हैं हमारे पास बॉडी बैग है उस बॉडी बैग के अंदर बॉडी को पैक करते हैं अपनी गाड़ी में रखते हैं फिर यहाँ लाते हैं उसे क्रिमेट कराते हैं जिनके घर से कोई नहीं है यानी सारे ही क्वारंटाइन है उनसे अंडरटेकिंग लेके हम कर देते हैं Meanwhile, authorities in northern Amritsar city are building makeshift platforms to cremate more than 30 bodies of COVID-19 victims that arrive there every day. Hospitals said they were overwhelmed and grave diggers worked around the clock to bury victims on Thursday as the country grappled with the coronavirus crisis. In this time, Durgyana and Shivpuri are being sanctioned by 30-32. COVID-19 on Friday infected over 386,000 more people in India in yet another worrying daily high and killed 3,498 in the last 24 hours, the health ministry data showed. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. 
Now our viewers can watch the show on southasianewsline.com. You can also visit us on facebook.com slash asianewsline and follow us on Twitter at asianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night.